Hey tribe and hey designers, welcome to HD Designs Crochet HDDC. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about the granny square and my crochet patterns and also a place where I teach new and aspiring crochet designers how to publish their patterns and create an income source. Today I've got a video for both of you. It will appeal to you whether you are here as part of the tribe or here because you also want to be a designer or you are a crochet designer. Now this video is how long it takes to go from design idea all the way to published pattern. Now if you are a designer this will appeal to you because it's really good to have an understanding of how long the processes take and also um, I add in a few ways that I can make it quicker or that it will slow me down so that you can be aware of those. And if you are part of the tribe and you don't want to release your own patterns, I still think this is really useful to see because quite often you will see designers post about their patterns and then I know that then you'll think, oh, well, that pattern should be out really soon. But I think this will help give you an understanding of all of the steps that go in and maybe how long it might take for that pattern to be published. Um, I am just going to add in here that I now only try and share my patterns once they've been tech edited or they are being tech edited because I find there's so many moving parts that until it gets to that stage, I can't really state or control when I'll be able to provide that pattern. And I don't like disappointing people. And also I do get quite a few demands for patterns and it, it can take the fun out of it. So, for this video, I didn't want to give an it depends answer. I wanted to try and give as much information as possible. So I have based this on how long it takes me to go from design to published pattern. And I've also added in factors of how that can be sped up and how that can also be slowed down and potential things that can spun us in the work. Um, spun us in the works? Yes. And I know this can differ for each person, it can differ for each designer, so, um, but what better way to share than what I do for me? And one of the things that I have also done is I have really, really got to grips with my schedule recently, so, um, because of the time that it takes for me to release a pattern, I have needed to become uber organised because I want a steady flow of patterns to come out. So by you watching this, you will then be able to see um, maybe ways that you can become more organised or um, start thinking ahead a little bit so that you can get that steady flow out if that's what you want as well. Now, there are quite a few um, steps in releasing a pattern, so I'm going to show you them now. Okay, so the first step is designing your pattern. I'm gonna put these on the screen for you as well. The second step is grading your design. Then you need to make a sample, then you need to have it tech edited, then you need to have it tested, and then you can release it. Now, going through each of those steps, as I said, I'm gonna tell you my time scales, um, and then my factors to speed it up, slow it down. This is my standard time scale for a garment pattern such as a jumper or a cardigan, a sweater if you are using US terminology. Um, if you was to make something like a bag or an accessory then that's completely different because for example if it's a bag you wouldn't need it grading, you probably wouldn't get it tech edited and so not only does it take out some of the steps um, but it's a smaller item. So. For now, I'm just gonna to stick to a jumper pattern and talk you through the standard process and the time scales for each step. So before we get into this, I would like you to comment below how long you think it takes for me to go from design to published pattern. If you put that in the comment below now, and then at the end, we will see how close you are to what I actually give you and if you are surprised by that or not. So starting with designing, on average it would take me one to two hours to come up with a design idea. Sometimes I get like multiple design ideas within minutes and other times I feel like I just don't have any design ideas coming to me. But I have them all written down as they come to me, I put them in a notebook and so I've always got something to go back to. Now with a design taking one to two hours, 
what I mean by that is I have a design specifications sheet within workbook one. I will fill that out, I will maybe add um, some scrap yarn to it that I want to use, I might even make a sample and then I put that within my folder that I've got here. This is for my patterns and my pattern ideas. It has my patterns at the front that I have already released. And then it's got release schedules for each one and at the back it's got design ideas. It needs tidying, I'm not going to show you it entirely right now. Design specification. I can then go on and make the gauge swatch. And again, that doesn't take very much time. I can usually get that done between the one to two hours, especially if I've already got the yarn in my stash. So once I've made the, the gauge swatch and I've got my design specification, then my design process is done and I can then go on to the next step, step two, which is grading. Now, there are a few factors that can slow down or speed up the step one of designing. So to make it faster, if my yarn is in stash, if um, I don't have to order it, that's always quicker. I just go to my yarn tower, grab what I want and use it. I've put that pot back the wrong way round. Oh, anyway. I can also make the design process quicker if I use a very simple stitch because then it might not take as long to make. Um, if it's a granny square, I can, I can ramp out the granny squares super, super quick. Um, if it's something more intricate or maybe slower, like a bobble stitch, it might take me longer. And also, if I am familiar with the construction, it's also a lot simpler because I already have a overview of how I'm gonna put that design together. So that's already helped me go on to the grading stage before I've even got started. However, things that can slow down the design process are if you need to order the yarn in, because not only have you got to pick and order the yarn, wait for it to be delivered, it might not be the yarn that you actually wanted, it might not be fit for purpose, um, all those different things that all adds to it, that's going to add up to a week, if not longer, unless you can go and get the yarn in person, all those different things. Um, and as I said, if it's a more intricate stitch, that can also add to the time because it's really, really simple. If you've got like chunky yarn and you just need to do um, rows of trebles to get your gauge swatch, that's gonna be a whole lot quicker than maybe using two ply to make bobble stitch and that you need like a decent 10 inch swatch so that you can go on to the grading. That two ply bobble stitch is gonna take you a whole lot longer than the chunky trebles, so. All of those things play into it. So having now dealt with step one, which is the design process, I have made my gauge swatch, for example, and I have also um, got my yarn in stash, I'm ready to go, or my yarn's here, we're ready to move forward. Then step two is to go on to do the grading. I have put here that it takes on average two days for me to grade a design. That isn't two days sat there solid, but that's working on it, dipping in and out of it over two days. I think if I was to sit, I could probably get it done in maybe six to eight hours. However, I never sit and do it all in one chunk. A few reasons being, um, I lose focus. <laughs> oh, dear me. I always spread out my grading over a couple of days. The reason being is I tend to input all the information that I need. I will do a certain point. I tend to then get started on the design and then I'll go back and grade other bits as and when I need it. Or I will sit there and I will grade everything for the sample size I want to make, which is the best way to do it really. And then um, I might just go back in and make tweaks. So I've put one to two days on average. You could, you could speed it up and make it faster by grading it in an intense period of time. So maybe setting yourself like four hours, I'm gonna have this whole thing done. You know, that would be a lot quicker. Um, you could also make it quicker by doing simple things such as um, weighing each part of your design as you go along. So when it comes to yardage, I end up doing that at the very end. You can calculate your yardage from your sample, but I tend to 
weigh my finished um from your swatch sorry but i tend to weigh my finished garment and then make sure that it fits and then sort out the ratios for all of the other um pattern sizes so if you know that you're going to be using granny squares for example then if you weigh the granny square that is the block you know so weigh one of these granny squares then you can input that in your spreadsheet and if you also weigh the two different rounds you can go into the nitty gritty detail now that will make it easier to do your grading so i could weigh one of these granny squares and the two different rounds now and put that in and calculate the majority of yardage now and if you were to just use a very simple switch switch stitch like um if you were to use a very simple stitch like trebles throughout you could also again use your sample to calculate the you could use your swatch to calculate the yardage of the sample um so that's one way to make it quicker way as you go the other way to make it quicker write notes as you go along to also if you know that you're going to need to make a tutorial make as you go along so if you need to show how to join something in a certain way do it there and then don't think i'll come back to it because that usually means you need to make a second sample but if you didn't have time to record it the first time round probably not going to have time to record it the second time round or to even make the second one so there are all ways that you can definitely speed it up another way to speed it up is to keep your yarn bands somewhere so that when it comes to doing the yardage and putting the information in the, the pattern you've got it all there to hand you've not got to go looking for them fish them out of the bin or go online and get that information you've just got it all there you're ready you're organized I find that it's really useful to put my yarn bands in with my design specification within my binder. You will find what works for you as you go along. Now ways that you can slow down your grading are, um, if it's your first time grading, it's gonna take you longer. If it's a new construction that you're not used to, again, it will also take longer. So if it's the first time you've decided to do sideways construction, so if you go from your sleeve across your body and back to your sleeve if it's the first time that's going to be longer than if you do a simple bottom up that you're used to doing um other ways that grading can be slower is that sometimes it just doesn't work like you might go on to make your sample thinking you've done the grading and then you hit a point and you're just like this isn't right and you have to go back and look at the numbers it's the nature of the beast it really is like you have the best intentions and then something happens and it takes longer it just does like when you go to update your laptop and you think oh it'll take 30 minutes and then like two hours later it's still going grading can be like that sometimes it just can okay so step three i have now done my designing and i have graded and then i'm on to step three and that is make the sample now I tend to give myself one to three weeks to make the sample and there are obviously some differences here that make a big uh, have a big impact on this. If the jumper that you are making is very intricate using two ply with the bobble stitch it's going to take you a whole lot longer than using the chunky yarn with with a treble stitch or a double crochet if you're in the US that then will work up really really quick compared to the two ply which would be really quite slow um also if you're familiar with the construction you are more likely to just jump in and get on with it whereas if you're not as sure you might be triple checking the numbers as you go along um and you know just treading a bit more cautiously because you're not sure or you're uncertain on certain parts you can also make it faster for yourself by setting like a um, mini deadline so you might think right I want to get this done within a week so to get this done within a week I need to have made the body panel the front body panel by the end of today the back body panel by the end of tomorrow um, I need to have made a sleeve by day three sleeve by day four and then I'm going to join it and do the final bits on day five which gives me day six and seven to um, 
block it and do whatever else it is that I need to do with it. If you set yourself mini deadlines like that, then you are more likely to get it done quickly than if, if you just pick it up as and when. So it is entirely up to the individual maker what um, factors and what they've got going on in their life and what the design looks like. Now, as I said, if you were making a handbag, it would be a whole different ball game to make an entire jumper. So it really does vary from person to person. But for me, for a, for a garment, for a jumper, I would say one to two, one to three weeks. Um, and as a general rule of thumb, if it takes me three weeks to make something, then I tend to try and double the amount of time that I give my testers. So I would give them six weeks to make it. Okay, factors that slow down making your sample are frogging. <laughs> like, it's the bane of every designer's life, but sometimes you just have no choice but to frog. You might have got overly confident and not checked your instructions and you've done your own pattern wrong. Maybe your numbers don't quite add up and you've had to frog. Or maybe you just don't like it. I have had a few patterns. There's a whole stack of granny squares down there actually that I made super fast. And then when I started putting it together, I just knew that it wasn't right. And so I'm gonna make that entire project all over again. And that happens. Um, I don't think there's any designer out there that I've ever seen that has never posted, oh, I need to frog because of X, Y, and Z. It happens and you can't really factor in the time for it. Like you hope that you don't need to, but sometimes there's just patterns that like three, four, five, six, seven times you end up frogging it and it can feel soul destroying. It is just the way it goes. So having designed my pattern, having graded my pattern, having made the sample for my pattern, it then goes on to be tech edited. Now for me, I have given this one to two weeks and largely I find that the turnaround for a pattern is about seven days. I've worked in a little bit extra time there. To make a tech edit quicker, you can help yourself by booking them in in advance. So if your um, tech editor might have like a a huge demand on their time or they are really booked out if you work out in advance when you're going to need something tech editing you can reserve that spot um so that it can be tech edited and so that you can then hit your release dates and the other way to make it quicker is to have the turnaround dates agreed in advance so um you might send one off to a tech editor but then most tech editors will say to you I've received it but I can't do it until week beginning whatever and so you'll have it back by week beginning x y and z so that you can factor that in. Having um, dates set out like that is really really helpful because if your tech editor is really really busy and they can't get to that pattern for four weeks then you need to know because either you need to jig around your release schedule or whatever it is you choose to do. Now things that can be a bit slower with tech editing are that um, maybe it's your first pattern that you sent and so there's a few issues in it that need to be rectified so there's a bit of backward and forward. Maybe um, they have a better way of you doing something so you just need to rework part of the numbers. Things like that, that can all slow it down. And also again if they don't have the availability and you're waiting that can also slow down your pattern. Um, I am also just going to add that at this point that not everybody gets their patterns tech edited. You don't have to get them tech edited. Um, I do because it gives me that peace of mind that they've been checked over by somebody that isn't me. I definitely think that when you've made something, you know how it should be. So when you look at it, you don't necessarily see what is there, but you see what you think, you see what you intend to be there. And it's the same with um, when you've written a big piece of text and you think that there's no errors in there at all and then somebody proofreads it and they point out the most ridiculous errors. It's because you wrote it, you know what it should say, so you then become blind to what is actually there. So I like to have all of my numbers um, tech edited, all of my patterns tech edited so that my numbers are correct and so that the proofreading is done. And I also find that because they have been tech edited, it has an impact on the pricing. It means that I can set a higher price point. So yes, I paid out more to get them tech edited, but ultimately you make more back because 
it gives the maker that confidence that your pattern has been um, checked over and that it is gonna work. Having designed, having graded, having made your sample, having had the tech editing done, you then go on to testing. So for me, I have just put six weeks for testing a jumper, a sweater. And um, as I said, generally, if it takes me about three weeks, I try to double it because everybody has their own factors in their own life. You know, children, different work commitments, different obligations, responsibilities. And also that as the sizes get bigger, um, so I offer nine sizes, the 5XL is going to need longer than the extra small because you are just covering more surface areas. It's going to take you longer. Um, now, ways to make testing quicker. If you have a smaller item, such as a handbag, then you can offer less time because they might only need three weeks. However, to make it quicker for a jumper, um, some testers are just super, super quick and they will have it done really quickly. Also, if you are in a bit of a pinch, you can just ask them to maybe check out a sleeve, like make a sleeve or make a body panel and make sure that that really works. And then um, they can then continue working on that whilst you've released the pattern. You can always put updates out on the pattern after it's been released if you really, really need to, but it's best to try and get your testing finished where possible. Now, things that can slow down testing are if there's an issue within your pattern, so maybe you've copied your numbers over incorrectly from your spreadsheet and a tester will pick up on that, so you need to just go back and check all of that. Um, maybe your testers need to wait for their yarn to be delivered or um, mat materials of some sort so they can make whatever design it is you're working on. Maybe they're waiting on that. I know definitely during the pandemic that there was slight postal issues for some people as well it might also be as simple as it is a bit of a struggle to find testers and so before you even get the testing started you're struggling to find them um in that scenario there are loads of different ways you could maybe find them by posting in facebook groups ravelry groups um asking other designers to give you a shout out and there's websites such as yarn pond and fiberly where you can find testers as well and then quite simply some testers just won't finish so it's always a good idea to try and have like two testers per size just in case somebody doesn't get to finish um, because it's just the nature of life things crop up that are unexpected that can't be helped and then that means that that size won't be finished um, you can always get around that by just putting in the description that it still hasn't been tested and offer that others can test it for you and things like that but ultimately that will slow down your process within testing so having now done all of the previous steps and we've finished our testing we are now on to step six which is the release we finally made it now for me the general rule of thumb is that it will take me one to two weeks from the test deadline to then release my pattern now this is because you will have things to prepare in the background so um the feedback from the testers needs to come in and then you need to update your pattern with all of that stuff in there you need to prepare the listings for your pattern to go on the various dif different websites that it's hosted on whether that be ravelry etsy love crafts your own website wherever else pay hip on and on and on um and also you might need to be posting about it on your social media. If you have gone through this entire process and then you've not posted about your pattern on your social media, you want to hold off for a couple of weeks so you can be posting about it so people know that it can be coming and so they can get excited about it before you then just launch it because your launch might be a little bit flat if you haven't let people know that it's coming. Um, now, for me, I'll come on to it in a bit how I sort all of that out but in terms of making it faster you can whilst your testers are testing you can get the draft listings ready so getting the description ready that you're going to be putting in the listings um having the images ready maybe having a draft on ravelry on etsy on your website so that all you need to do is add the updated pattern um the night of release the day of release just before 
put it in and then you're ready to go. Um, and also, whilst your pattern is with testers, maybe start posting about it on social media if you can so that people know it's coming. So in total of my six different steps of design, grading, making a sample, tech editing, testing and release, it takes me around 12 weeks, which is about three months to go from design to release, which is why when I say that sometimes you post on social media and that pattern is not ready, it can be some way off because me having made the sample is step three. It still has three more steps to go through and arguably the testing stage is the biggest stage. So it is at least at that point eight weeks away, if not more. Um, and when you post about something and then you, you can't deliver it for up to two months, that is a big gap, which is why now I have changed it so that I'm only posting about it around the time of a tech edit being completed and that is when I'm shouting for testers as well. A few things that I wanted to add on to this point is that um, this process is different for every person. So as I said, you might outsource your grading, you which will have its own time attributed to that. You might not go through the tech editing, which might claw back some time for you in one manner of speaking. Um, you might offer less time to your testers. Again, that is up to you and what is comfortable for your testers. And um, you might be uber, uber organized and quite a few of these areas might have overlap. Um, like as you're making your sample, you might already be calling for testers. Um, then I also just want to add in that within those six areas that I've pointed out, there are multiple times where you need to update your pattern. So um, you need to write out the pattern once you've made the sample. And then you also, once it's been tech edited, you need to write up the revisions that the tech editor's given you. And same with when um, your pattern testers are done, you need to revise that pattern and get that ready. And that all has time attributed to it as well. Um, so it differs for each person. If you can give, if you've got two hours a day that you can put in on this, you are likely to make really good progress. If you've got half an hour a day, you're likely to make really good progress. If you can only put in an hour a week, it will be slower for you because you've got less time to put in. Um, also, you might already have a backlog of patterns like me, which means that um, you've got various samples, you've got parts of grading ready so that when you come to each design it might be that you don't need the chunk of time for the sample because you've already got that or you don't need the chunk of time for the design and the grading because you've already done that. So it differs for each person but I hope that by me giving you that overview you can see how long it takes me within HGDC. Um, the other thing that I did want to add that you can reverse engineer this entire thing. So if you know that you want to release one pattern per month, every month for a year, then you can reverse engineer these dates by saying, I want to release a pattern in um, December 2021, the last month of the year, which means if it takes me three months, I need to start making the sample at this point. So you can literally reverse engineer. Okay, so release is this day, which means that my testers need to be done by this day which means I need to shout for testers on this day which means I need to have the tech edit revisions back by this day which means I need to send it for tech editing by this day which means I need to have made my sample by this day which means and you can work your way backwards um, that's if you want to have the steady flow if you're just making them as and when then you can just enjoy this entire process you don't really need to put the deadlines on it because it doesn't matter that much to you. So now we've been through that and you've already posted your comment about how long you think it would take to go from design to publish pattern. Go back to that comment and let me know if you are surprised at my time scale of 12 weeks, which is three months. I'm really, really interested to know what you think and then I can go through and have a look um, and just see. I'm wondering if anybody's got it bang on the money or if there's any that think it's longer or yeah, let me know below and I'll get back to you.
if you've enjoyed this video, which I hope you have, then you might also find a couple of my other videos really useful. One of them was my talk with my tech editor, Tabitha Thomas Studios. Her name is Linda and I will link that for you above. And you might also enjoy a couple of the others within the hub, which will be shown at the end of this video. So make sure you add them to your watch later or um, start watching them now. That is everything for this video and I will see you next time for another vlog. So until then, thank you for watching, happy making, happy designing and take care. Oh my eyes. But I most definitely My Alexa. <laughs>